talking about vampire chess. Do you guys equate your um, show to kind of playing chess a little bit with your characters? Yeah, I mean, we, we have the benefit of a show that's uh, almost about a revolution. And so there are factions within factions. There are objectives. There's an existential crisis within the vampire community itself. So there is a lot of chessboard storytelling. A lot of moving pieces too. So yeah, we. I don't think we ever said it as eloquently as you did, but we certainly, we we definitely fell into that uh, mall. Yeah. So how would you describe your general, your new characters that you're introducing to fans coming on board? Well, I think we wanted a really, um, uh, we wanted a full spectrum of human characters that would reflect. Uh, different points of view on this uh, nightmare scenario so that we weren't just one note in how our central characters deal with problems and solve problems so and there is no central control structure in this show everyone is sort of equal therefore the way humans deal with each other is rife with problems and um, you know what Neil's expertise is in, is the darkness of human behavior and that reflects against the darkness of vampire behavior quite well. So, in, in essence, we wanted a show where maybe the most dangerous thing wasn't the vampire, but it was the person next to you that you're surviving with. That they had, there was a greater chance of being um, fucked over by death than, than a vampire that happened to find you. So yeah, we were, we're trying. We were trying to make sure that by drawing a very specific group of people who were very different that uh, you wouldn't be able to predict what would happen in s scenario to scenario. Is that your way of saying you're playing like hide the uh, hero in the show so we don't know episode to episode who we should be really reading for? Well, I think the show's called Van Helsing's is a natural inclination to tell the story through the lens of Vanessa's character. But I think early on you realize, because this is a show about self-discovery, she, she doesn't know about the mythology, she doesn't know about her powers. She's discovering with the audience what's happening. Well, not only what's happened to the world, but also what's happened to her. So, in a way, yeah, she is quite neutral in her perspective, but also she's neutral in the way people want to use her. She's kind of like this atom bomb, you know, and the vampires can use it and the humans can use it. So she becomes a tool and a weapon that, and no one's really asked her if she wants to be. No one's asked if she wants to be a messianic character in this story. And so her struggle is much more interesting as a result. What was the challenge of creating something from, you know, original source material with a male lead as compared to, you know, female lead? Yeah, well, it was interesting because we knew it was going to be contemporary out of the gate, which, which eliminated so many of the things from the Van Helsing mythology. Because once we went contemporary, we knew we were free from a lot of things like crossbows and hats, and, you know, pitchforks and, <laughs> and torches. So immediately gave the show a different um, tone in terms of the world. And we, we felt like an audience wanted it to be, would rather watch a show where if this happened, how would people react? As opposed to a, high, a higher than uh, an extreme version of a universe where it's theatrical or, or operatic. We didn't want to do that. We, we wanted to ground it in more of a, um, I guess the way The Walking Dead did it with the zombies, you know, sort of be, be a bit more um, real world, which is a big change from, you know, the, the Bram Stoker, you know, Transylvania world of Dracula. Would you consider, like, Vanessa kind of like an anti-hero in this case? Or? I don't know if she's an anti-hero as opposed to just a complex character, because an anti-hero suggests a singular perspective, and Vanessa's character is really a pinball in a lot of ways to many perspectives, and is led in one direction, led in another direction, and has to make up her own mind about what she wants. So I would say that um, she's unpredictable as a hero, but not an anti-hero necessarily. Yeah. I think she has altruistic intentions and wants to act on those, but it's hard to. I find I have the same problem <laughs> on a daily basis. That's true. Yeah. You mentioned The Walking Dead. Does this show have sort of some sort of a potential outcome where there, or is it just about the survival? Like in, in The Walking Dead, it's just about the survival. There's no, no way of fixing the problem. Yeah, we have we have you know half of our story is spent with the vampires actually dealing with their existential issues, which is you know they basically won the battle, but they will lo they will lose the war if they're not careful because they've taken their food source and killed it. 
And so they have to actually rethink their long view of what they've done, because if they don't, they're going to die off as a result of killing everyone. So it's kind of a complex situation with no sort of uh, um, central leadership, really, in a traditional sense. You have factions among factions of vampires deciding what's the best course of action, and there's disagreement within those vampires as to what to do. So we get to spend quite a decent amount of time in our show uh, looking at how the vampires are going to deal with their own problems and successes as characters. And so we have a spectrum of vampire characters, really, that echo our human survivor stories in the sense that they have different intentions, different goals, uh, there are rivalries, there are, there's backstories that, are, um, that, are, that come into play. So it's, it's a little different than just pure kind of constant survival story. Um, it really becomes more like a civil war story, uh, almost like a revolution within, you know, uh, the problems of winning, like, okay, we won, we, won, we won this battle against the humans, now what? That to me is much more interesting than the next battle. It's like, okay, how do, what do we do with this win? How do we sustain it? How do we win against also potentially a weapon that could neutralize us? Uh, which we can't allow to happen. We can't allow that to happen. So I think those those um, dilemmas from the vampire's perspective are we can make as interesting as our human dilemmas. Is it, so is it more of like a political story than on the vampire? There's side? soft politics. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's politics on a on a ma on a large map. I would say it's politics on a small map. So you have politics within groups, and you have politics on the kind of once we've established our feudal. Uh, environment of humans and vampires because even the humans have to have a split amongst themselves. So the politics of those relationships, yeah, I think are they're, I don't think they they sort of reveal themselves as the show goes on it's not something that is in your face early on but once you start to understand why things are happening then you start to see the politics kind of emerge and, uh, and also we sort of we slowly parse out the vampire story because we didn't want to burden the first half of the show with their politics and the palace intrigue of vampires. We felt that was something best served till our human characters actually started to integrate with the vampires in a way that allowed that to happen. Can you just talk about the casting of Chris and Jonathan? Yeah. How did you choose them for their role? Well, you know, in this situation with Chad and Mike, who uh, worked on Hell on Wheels and Fargo, there was a natural inclination to work with actors they had worked with before. And so, with Jonathan and Chris in particular, their names were actually presented early on, as even before we started writing, as potential actors that we could fold into the show. Because the chat had had such a good experience with them on uh, Helen Reels that it was a uh, it was sort of an opportunity for us more than anything. One casting. No, great casting. I think the strength of the show at the end of the day, people will say the performances and. Uh, and, and those characterizations are really the are sustaining the show in my view. More than anything. Yeah. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. Thank you.